Hello my friends, welcome to lesson 12 in the All for Strings Violin course. I'm Henriette and in this lesson today we're going to be working on page 22 in your book and we're going to finish our lesson with a duet. So by the end of this lesson I'm hoping that you will have developed your flexibility and your strength in your third finger and I'm hoping also that you'll feel far more comfortable playing that third finger. So hang in there until right to the end. Now we're going to start our lesson today with the answers to exercise 52. And there are more than one possible answer on some notes and I'll talk you through as we are. So let me show these to you first. The A is right here. The G is on the, through the second line. The E might be this low E, which you play with the first finger on the D string. However, if you've placed your note as an open E string, so between the top two lines, that would also be a good answer. You can see that I've written my notes all as quarter notes or as crotchet notes as we call them in England. Um, I'm hoping you have done that too. It doesn't really state how you need to play, how you need to write them, but since your, the examples are given in those notes, I have done the same thing. What you want to check over is that all your notes that are written below the centre line have got their stems up. So you can see my three notes here have their stems up. Any note on the centre line or above have their stems down. And you can see that as an example here. Can you see the stems going down? Now, then the next note is a C. You can write that there. A, F and E. And it would be quite nice if you had a different type of E from the one there. So either of those two is a good answer. Then here we've got B, A, D. A D could also be a note which is through the second line from the top, but an open D string as you would play it on the open D string would also be good. A G is there, or you might write a note like you play the open G string. Those are all good answers. And then we've got the E again, and you have the option of either writing a low E or a high E. Here at the end, I've gone sort of up the scale almost, D, E, F, A, C, E, now this E could also be a low E, it's not wrong, it's still a right answer, and a D at the end, and this D could either be this D like I've written it, or it could be a low D that hangs off the bottom line. So let me know in the comments section down below this video, how you got on with this. Did you find this really difficult? And I think this is quite challenging, this exercise, so write about it in the comments section and you've done your bit of theory for today. Well done. Let's go ahead now and do some playing. And we're going to start our playing by checking over our finger line, our thumb, and by pushing our wrist away. And I'm going to play all four fingers on the D string one by one and we're going to connect with our singing again today. So I'm playing long bows and I'm playing D first. Stop the bow for a moment. Now can you sing the note which will be the first finger? Now sing the note for the second finger. You can bring your elbow further under the violin, which enables you to reach further with your little finger. But you can also soften up your thumb. If your thumb is squeezing, somehow the pinky often can't reach it. So soften up your thumb so that you enable your pinky to reach. And there is this strange connection between your pinky and your thumb. And if you can bring your thumb up, it will be easier for your pinky to stretch, you see. Let's do the same exercise again. Starting on D with a nice straight long bow. Stop the bow. 
Finger one, ta. Finger two, ta. Finger three, pa. Finger four, pa. And check it again with your open A string. Awesome. And I'm hoping that this second go was a bit easier than your first go. Lovely job. So this time I'm going to sing the letter names of the notes as I'm playing them. So it's essentially the same exercise but now we're just not singing any odd note. We're singing letter names. D E down this section of notes, four again, amazing and you're getting more accomplished every time you play something. Now a little bit of troubleshooting, first of all if you find yourself shaking it usually happens around this area of the bow Okay, what you can do about that is stop your bow, consciously drop your shoulder and your right elbow, and then continue your bow. Now try it again. Oh, I can feel the shaking coming on. Stop the bow, drop all of that and hang off the string with your bow a bit more. All right, so that might be one thing that uh, happens to you. It happens to many people. So please don't be disheartened if that is you. It will go away as you gain more experience in playing the violin. So another thing that might happen is that you might not be able to reach the point of the bow. And that might be because your elbow goes backwards rather than your forearm going forward. So we're stretching. So instead of going sideways with your arm, your arm will need to play forwards like that. Now one thing that we haven't really thought about much at all, and you may have watched other videos on YouTube where you've noticed this, or you may have seen me, playing slightly more on the side edge of your bow. That is all right if you're an advanced violin player, but at this stage in your playing I want you to aim to play with all the hair flat on the strings. We want to learn first what that feels like before we start adding variations. So if you can, make sure that you play all the hair flat on the string rather than playing on either side of the bow hair. So keep it nice and flat for now. Let's have a look now at exercise 56 in your book. And in this exercise we're going to play a D string and then we've got a beat rest and then the third finger. Now what we're practicing is to place your finger during the rest, or I should say place your fingers, plural, because not only are you going to play your third finger, yes you're playing your third finger, but all the fingers go down when you have the third finger to play. So I'll show you what we're doing. We're going to start in the middle of the bow this time, and we're playing a short D which goes to the point, and now we're having a rest, and then I'm playing my third finger. Now, while you lift up your third finger to play an open D, hover your finger just above that spot. So this is what I'm doing, look. I'm hovering it. I'm not way off, but I'm just hovering it just above so that my string is just free with your finger. So be careful not to go all the way up because your third finger is coming back down again, you see. I'll show you again from the start. So will you join me? So let's place your bow in the middle and we're going to play a down bow. So we're going to play towards the point. Here we go. And D. Rest. Place your fingers. One, two, three. Gorgeous. Now let's play a long third finger. Carry on. Hover your fingers just above that spot. 
everything about all of your fingers and now repeat that same action lovely job now really take the bow back to the middle okay here we go and now you place the second finger so that means fingers one and two off you go Hover, hover close by. Well, that is awesome playing and that takes some practice to perfect it. Um, so long as you think that you're going to put all your fingers down all the time and you're not lifting your fingers up too high but you're just staying right there okay I sometimes say to people pretend you've got a little roof over your head and you can't actually lift your fingers up higher you need to stay and not touch that roof over the head okay let's have a go now at the Norwegian folk song And when we play the Norwegian folk song number 57, you're going to practice to leave your lower fingers down when you add a new finger. So check over your finger line, your thumb, your wrist, check over your elbow that it's nice and straight underneath the violin. Lovely job. This time we're starting at the heel of the bow. One, two, three, four. into a habit of doing that you will very soon find that this becomes easier and it becomes second nature so allow yourself the time by using these little breaks in your music to focus on the correct techniques whilst it may seem that it takes you a split second longer at this stage in the long run it is going to save you a lot of time when you build up your techniques properly from scratch we come to our duet now and this is always the fun part, isn't it? So let's have a look at what it is about. Let me play, let me play the first part for you first. <laughs> slightly more slowly. You may have noticed that instead of open strings I was using the fourth finger and I would encourage you to do so too. So let's go at a very slow pace and we're going to test our second finger first so check your finger line, your thumb and your wrist and especially your elbow as well because we're going to be using that fourth finger and we're playing D1-2 just to test that finger <laughs> Just your finger if you're not completely in tune. 
because obviously when you play duet the intonation is even more important than when you play on your own. When you're ready, let's start at the heel of the bow and let's begin with a long bow. One, two, three, four. my fingers one by one. You might want to practice this a few times so that you can play this song without interruptions, without any errors. So once you can do that, let's play it as a duet and let's go a little bit more quickly. So I'm testing my fingers before the start. One, two, three, four. as you like by simply playing the video back and starting again. So super, super playing. Now if you're enjoying these lessons, perhaps you'd like to become a member of Henriette's Violin Club and you can find the introduction video to Henriette's Violin Club on this channel and you can also click the join button and find out what the perks are when you are a member of the club. The purpose of Henriette's Violin Club is for me to connect with my YouTube followers a little bit better by offering more face-to-face -face and chat contact. So the best perk of all is that you get a monthly Henriette Goes Live session where you can ask me questions in real time. So any questions that you may have will get answered there and then and you can progress your violin playing from there. You can also have custom emojis and special badges and you can also have a community chat where you can discuss issues with fellow members of Henriette's Violin Club. But why not join today by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button on this channel. So I very much look forward to meeting you in a more personal way and finding out about your play. Thanks very much for watching today. I look forward to seeing you in lesson 13.